Hello and good morning. You are back with the crew. Today we're going to talk about the money system. What money means to you, what money is in its creation, and I'm not talking the basics uh, that we talk about all the time. I want to talk about the lifespan of it, the way it's been for the last few hundred years, and the way it's going forward. Those of you who watch this show know that I believe that uh, in many ways a storage of wealth will be, one of the storages of wealth will be Bitcoin. One of the major transactions, also a storage of wealth in some degree, and that's a fine line as to describe, describing how that will work, but the XRP being the future of the movement of many, if not all, transactions going forward. Today, I want to talk a little bit bigger picture as to how those two are going to interact with each other, number one. Number two, probably more importantly, where we're at right now, fundamentally, globally, not so much geopolitically, because all of the stuff that's going on and firing rockets at each other, that's not really what this show's about. I, I get there's high tension. Everybody's worried about the W3 thing. That's not what this is about. The fundamentals of all of those actions really come down to the economies, the money. What's the digits? What are the digits and how are they valued? Well, that's become in question, really, hasn't it, lately? In the last 10 to 15 years, the growth of cryptocurrency has been mind-blowing. Let's remember that it wasn't very long ago that China was trying to do everything they could to ban its citizens from obtaining Bitcoin or crypto in any sense. And then they banned mining. And then now it turns out to the second largest holder, as far as nations go, of Bitcoin and other cryptos. Remember, they just launched their, they just approved for Hong Kong not just Bitcoin, Ethereum ETFs. Next, in my opinion, is going to be XRP. And that's coming. And Hong Kong will wrap their head around XRP very quickly. And in fact, we already know that HSBC and some other people have been involved. Not what this video is about. This video is, I want to go big picture with the value of things. So we've had... We've had an era uh, for a very long time now, since 71, basically, but just trust us, we're good for it. Just use the dollar, those digits, they're great. We like them. In fact, if you don't like them or use our system globally, our central banking system, we'll come after you with our armies. Essentially, we've done that forever. I don't know if you've noticed the trend, but as of lately, Conflict globally isn't about that anymore. To where it used to be, oh, well, you want to go to a gold back? No, 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 we need to invade those people. We need to come after them. They've lost the plot. We need to go in there and wise those people up. What's happening now is there's a big shift. And I really, I, I know that BRICS has been going on for many years, since the 14, I think I've been following it, 2014. But this bigger than that even. <clears throat> and what I mean is the value of things. Let's, let's remember that Larry Fink talks, we, uh, we're going we're gonna to exchange the value of things. We're going to make all things tokenized. We're going to tokenize the value of everything. Well, what is the value to man of things? Well, labor is pretty important. Okay, That's really important to you and I. In particular, if you have a job skill that's really important. So, But let's... Let's go bigger picture than that. If, if you're going to bring something to a table or a transaction, what are you going to bring? Well, this is what this video is about. You used to bring value in dollars. We know those are diminishing in value because one week they're going to 
I don't know, cover all the auto workers and cover all their pensions and then all the military pensions and then all the, you know, college students that can't pay their debts. And then we're going to cover, we're going to print more and we're going to just gonna print more for these people. And, you know, we're going to more foreign aid, which is really, let's call foreign aid what it is. It's a bribe, right? To other governments and, and to keep this Ponzi alive, if you will. Well, what started to happen in particular, the fast track happened right around 2020. And the fast track happened like this. Well, this whole thing happened, everybody got locked up and then we printed a bunch of stuff and then we, and then the world went, they can't just do that. I can't believe they just did that. Our people had to suffer through that year or two of being locked up and our economy is getting crushed, but everybody in the US was spending like they were mad, they're drunken sailors. You know, it was like, well, well, wait a minute. How does that work? That didn't look fair to me. That didn't look honest. And that really got and everybody having so much time on their laptop, sitting around, not, not, not much else to do, and figuring a lot of the monetary system out. Brings us to today. Well, many other things have happened in between there. You know, some wars and then the U.S., you know, shutting other countries through SWIFT system, shutting other banks down, our countries down so they couldn't do banking and globally and whatnot. This leaves us with this dollar debt, global debt behemoth of a mess that has paper written on top of paper on top of paper, and nobody knows what reality is anymore, okay? Well, oddly enough, Things that you and I thought 10, 20 years ago that it wasn't real, which is digital, we were like, well, that's not real. You can't hold it in your hand. Well, the digital in which they pursued in the monetary system wasn't real because they just made it out of nowhere and just made a bunch of them to pay off any ridiculous thing that they thought was important to them next. That's going away slowly now. Remember, this is not going to happen tomorrow. This is not a panic video about what's going to happen to your life next week. What this is, is that's why gold is going up. This is why precious metals are going up. This is why Bitcoin will probably only go up from here. Now, I know there's going to be fluctuations of 10, 20, 30, 40%. I get that. I understand that. But the fluctuations used to be 90%, and they're no longer that, okay? So the world now is saying, well, I understand, even China, right? I, I painted the picture earlier that, hey, they tried to ban it in their country. Now they're actually using in time accounting in Hong Kong for their ETF, which means, oh, you can give them a Bitcoin and you can receive a Bitcoin or cash and get a Bitcoin 10 years later from them, a real coin a real digital coin. So they've turned the corner on the value of what a Bitcoin or a cryptocurrency is, okay? In their case, in Ethereum, and like I said, XRP is coming. That is now real value. What else is real value? Oil. Oil is real, bring it. It's a real value. Everybody needs it. Everybody understands it. Everybody uses it. Electricity. Can you create a lot of electricity? Yes, we need that. Okay. Precious metals. We need those. People believe in them. The system believes them. Central banking believes them. They are to some degree scarce and they are a measurement of value. Okay. This is all of these things are known as assets. So when you see a country like China and Russia go asset based, we're talking about getting back to our fundamentals. Can you make electricity? Do you have natural gas? Do you have oil? Do you have crypto? Do you have the top 10 cryptos? Do you have precious metals? Can you make electricity? Can your labor of your nation produce goods? That's it, guys. We're going back to that. Why? Because they have a seat at the table. Now let's talk about what's happened at the table. The table, the banking system. 
The banking systems, oh, we're good for it. Don't worry about it. We got this. Your $1 deposit, we get to say we have $10 now. That is in question globally. Because remember, you don't get to just bring one barrel of oil and say you have 10. You can't do that. You can only do that with the fiat monetary system. Okay. I'm not, again, now I'm not saying it's going to crash tomorrow. And I know you know a lot of these basics. But I'm, what I'm trying to get across to people is what's happening now is big. Because it's becoming obvious to you and I, everybody who has crypto or precious metals is getting it. The rest of the world will get it. Now, it's going to take time because, like I like to say, Joe Sixpack doesn't get it. When Joe Sixpack won't come to your house and work his tail off for eight hours a day, whoever they are all over the world, if they're not going to do that for the fiat dollar anymore, then the fiat dollar is in big trouble. So let me get back to the banking and why they have failed us and how they've gotten along away with it for so long. <clears throat> Banks essentially with this printing system in which they're connected, the Federal Reserve and central banks, get the money virtually for free and then they create it and say loan it out to you because you purchase things and then you become indebted to them and then you pay the interest back and then that interest is actually their income. Okay? So when that system gets exploited, Okay, with fractional reserve banking, the way it has, all of a sudden numbers get on top of numbers and numbers. And then if everybody paid everybody off, there wouldn't be enough numbers. So they get away with inflation annually because they constantly do this. When you understand the way the banking system works, it's like, oh, well, this bank failed. It's, like, it's a lot like whack-a-mole. Oh, well, that bank failed. Yeah, you know, back to Signature Bank and Silicon Valley. When those were failing, all the other banks were looking stronger because, oh, we'll take all those people in. That was those people's mistake. Okay? They have the same fraud going. They have the same Ponzi. That's identical. Neither one of them have all the numbers in which they say they were supposed to have. In particular, your deposits. Right? So... When a bank fails, the other banks just get stronger, according to the media and people around you. Well, nation states and governments are figuring that out, clearly. They're like, well, we don't want to play that game anymore, okay? We know that the whole thing looks shaky, and the amount of money that you've printed recently is astronomical, that it's beyond our minds to even comprehend how anybody could ever pay any of that back. So if nobody ever has to pay anything back, what is the value of the money? Zero. It could potentially go to zero. So nation states, in particular BRICS, but also many other countries, I have decided, well, our people produce, we have natural resources, and we want to get paid for them. We're going back to reality in that sense. Digitally, they're keeping track of all that. That's where XRP comes in. XRP comes in in its transactional speeds and its ability to keep the entire thing straight. Thankfully, it doesn't have a hat in the political ring either side. It's a neutral ground in which everybody can transact. Take your yuan, put it into XRP, and it comes out a dollar. We can, we can live with that. Okay, that's a transactional. Put your Bitcoin at one end, put it into XRP, and have it come out a dollar at the other end. We can all live with that because we trust its decentralization of all players involved. It's gaining and gaining in credibility. Like I said, China started hating cryptocurrencies, and now they're adopting more and more of their ETFs. So let's talk now about their ETFs. How important is this? How important is their precious metals market and their petroleum market? How important is that to everybody? Well, it's damned important, and here's why. They are now the owners, not, I mean, Mexico owns a bunch of them, but we're talking about national security now. We're talking about the bond market. 
Okay, all of these bonds and all these paper bonds that have been put out there so that the Federal Reserve can create more digits, okay, banks actually create the digits, but you, bear with me on that, that's a whole nother video. But when they have written this paper and these people hold these pa paper bonds, they were abused back with the whole Ukraine thing, with Russia, lost the six to eight hundred billion dollars worth of the U.S. good no matter what. This is our, our loyalty and our entire nation and we're backed by the security of our country is on these bonds. Well, they failed Russia in that sense. They seized these bonds. They took these bonds over and they didn't allow them to be what they were, a national security. This was a shockwave around the world. I know you guys all know this story. But what happened there was it told countries, well, we got to look for another asset. Well, the problem, here's the problem with gold. And it's got to be dug out of the ground. Okay, we get all that. What's the other problem with it? Well, it's about geography. You got to kind of have the geography to dig it out of the ground. Otherwise, it is kind of pricey to find it and buy tons of it. But it's good. We like it. That's probably, in my opinion, the second best asset. What's the third best asset is the most used asset, which is oil. But it's very difficult to store. You can't store a bulk in it. You can't hold your Federal Reserve's Sorry, I got a cat going up and down my lap here. The last time she knocked the camera over, we had to shoot the video twice. But we don't want that. So when you hold your money in bonds, they, the country of, uh, who wrote the bond has to be good for the money. We're starting to fail in those categories. So people say to themselves, I've got trillions in China's uh, sense. What am I going to do with these bonds? I've got a trillion and a half dollars worth of U.S. bonds. What am I going to do with these? Oddly, you would ask that because Hong Kong is one of the largest bond trading networks in all the world. Yeah, little known fact. And now you can do what? You can buy a real Bitcoin, not a cash settled, a in time, Bitcoin contract that you can settle for a real coin with your printed paper bond from the US. Are you following me now? So all those fake digits are going to be turned into because they ruined the national security strength of them with one nation already. So if you owned a trillion and a half dollars of those and you've recently looked at the crypto market and you've watched it go up three times, four times in value and the U.S. bonds being wor worth less and less annually, why would you hold your money in those when they're liquid enough to buy the number one asset in my opinion? Remember, I started with Number two, in my opinion, I believe is precious metals, and they're buying a ton of it because it's easier for them. They, China now controls the precious metals market pricing. I don't know if you knew that. It's no longer in London. And who else controls the oil price now? The Saudis and the Russians because they got together and they decided, well, you know, the way it's been run before, we don't like the way that whole Brent crude thing has been going. We're going to go ahead and create our own market for it and sell it globally. And therefore, they become more substantial in their market and their numbers. So they can make number go up and down the way they want through the distribution because they're two of the top three nations who produce oil. But they can also, who else has a ton of bonds? The Saudis. Does the Saudi want to buy gold? Yeah, they've been buying it forever. Do they want to buy oil? Absolutely not. They're not buying oil, right? Think about it. So what are they going to do? They're buying cryptos. 
particular right now, they're buying Bitcoin. They're going to be buying all the ETFs and they're not going to be buying them through BlackRock because it, that's a cash settlement. So now you look at BlackRock and you say, well, that, that, there's going to be less demand on the BlackRock and more demand globally from Hong Kong, which is going to force BlackRock to have to go in time in the future, as I've said in other videos. Hope all that kind of makes sense. I hope you get what's happening here now. We're looking at a global change. We're looking at the difference of, I believe in that. I, I, let, I still believe in this is okay. I still understand that a dollar will buy a burger, you know, or $20 at this point. But it's diminishing and diminishing and diminishing in value. And they've seen... In particular, the top 10 cryptos, they've seen them only climb in value and their transaction speeds and their security. And they get to hold it cheaply. You don't have to own ships full of oil or buildings full of gold. It's so much easier to hold crypto. It, it, that's why I call crypto the number one global asset. Gold, the number two global asset. And number three, I know oil, even above all of those is the most important. But when you're holding an asset, it's very difficult to hold oil. Real estate obviously is up there, but every country has their own real estate. And it's subjective to the country and the people and who wants to live there and the taxation of the people and the government and they, they control it. So it's way more subjective with real estate. And as we know, property around the world has been overproduced to some degree, in particular in China and many other areas. So that's less valuable in holding of wealth, in my opinion, compared to the other three. Anyway, that was a big picture. I was talking with a friend of mine about this whole conversation, and uh, he, he had reminded me that uh, he was going to make a video about it. He did a few days ago. And I thought, well, okay, well, yeah, since he and I had a discussion, I'm going to go ahead and make my own video about it. So it was, uh, it was a great conversation. He's a good man. We are in a time to where crypto is more important to the future of man than ever before. And the beauty of that is this. Crypto is hope. It gives you and I hope. We believe. We, if you didn't have crypto, what would be your hope? Global peace? That's not looking real hopeful. I mean, are you hopeful that you're going to spring an oil well in your backyard or dig gold out of your back? No. Do you, think, do you think the hope of your employment's really looking great because AI is coming and all these? No, it's difficult to see hope in the world. Crypto gives us that. It gives us that connection to the lower class us, middle to lower class people of a shot, at a, a seat at the table. Okay, with the diminishment of the dollar, we know that our coins are going to grow in value because the diminishment of the dollar is not going to stop. It can't because they're in competition with crypto, gold, oil, and real estate. And it will climb in value all of those assets to the production, overproduction of the US dollar going forward. I know you guys know a bunch of that, but there's some insight in there that I hope you guys got. I hope you enjoyed this video, and uh, I will be back with a video with you very soon. Oh, and if you like this kind of content, and if you haven't liked already, please like it. Please subscribe. Come check out our uh, our page, and uh, we we have a. Uh, we have a lot of fun stuff in our Patreon group that you can find at thecryptocrew.info. So find us over there, and it's been a pleasure with you again, and I will see you again very soon. I am out. So it's come to my attention that people are selling their crypto because they're concerned about the world. I am not here to give financial advice. 
I'm here to tell you that's the exact opposite play I would make. I heard someone say, well, it looks too volatile in a volatile world and I have to get out. I have to get out now. And I understand that. I get it. You get panicked. There's fear out there. It's everywhere. Just remember, when's the last time fear actually created wealth? That's right. Like, never. Love you.